Today we finally talk about the really interesting topic of the modes once again. But this time we're doing something that we haven't done before. This is all about songwriting, chords and really unique sounding voicings that you can use for your own music from now on. So let's not waste any more time and start working on some theory right away. and girls voted for the topic of typical modal cadences on the lesson wish list on Patreon for this month. It's really great for me to see that you're also interested in music theory aside from all the crazy shredding that we're working on. <laughs> Your ears might have recognized the mode that we're working on today. In the intro improvisation, we're working with the Dorian mode today. There is one basic theory information that I want you to remember whenever you think about the modes. You might already know that the modes are seven heptatonic scales, but to me the absolute most important information when it comes to the modes is that they are very closely related. For today's video, you can actually see the A natural minor scale, a very popular scale, as the basic foundation. So in this very commonly used scale, we have the notes A, B, C, D, E, F and G. It's actually quite easy to also figure out the chords that you have available in the key of A minor. You just have to stack the third and fifth to each note of the scale. As you might know, when I do that for the first scale degree for A, I can just count up three notes in the scale, A, B, C. So C is the third for the chord on the first scale degree and then I can just count up five notes, A, B, C, D, E. E is the fifth note, so the fifth for the first scale degree. And since C is a minor third and E is a perfect fifth, I have an A minor chord on the first scale degree of A minor. When I continue to do that for all seven notes or all seven scale degrees in the A minor scale, I end up with the chords A minor, B diminished, C major, D minor, E minor, F major and G major on the seventh scale degree. So far so good, you might already know the basics if you watched some theory videos on this channel already, but now it gets really interesting what happens when we do that for the Dorian scale. So let's compare the notes of the A minor scale with the notes in the A Dorian scale real quick. So just as a quick reminder, in the A minor scale I have the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And as you can see on screen in the A Dorian scale, I have the notes A, B, C, D, E. So the exact same notes up to this point, but then I have F sharp instead of F, and then I move up to G. So as you can see, there's just one note that is changing from A minor to A Dorian, and that is the sixth scale degree. We don't have a minor sixth interval in this scale, we have a major sixth. So when you learn about the modes that way, you don't just remember where to put your fingers with different scale boxes that you learn across the neck. You actually know and learn to understand that this note right here, F sharp, is the characteristic note of that mode. So this note really brings out the sound of Dorian. And the thing that's sadly very often forgotten is that you can also apply all of this knowledge to chords, of course. So when I want the really cool and mysterious sound of Dorian for my composition, I don't really have to look up Dorian chords on the internet. I can really just add that characteristic Dorian interval, F sharp in the case of A Dorian, to my A minor chord, or just to keep it very simple, just to the minor third interval. So I'm playing A and C, the minor third, and I can also play the low A string and then I can add F sharp on top of that to get that kind of dark and mysterious Dorian flavor in my chord. And of course that one changed note when we compare A minor to A Dorian has a big effect on all the chords on the different scale degrees since it is featured in multiple chords of course. So when I stack the third and fifth and also the seventh to all the scale degrees in Dorian I end up with different chords of course than in A minor. I get the A minor seventh chord on the first scale degree and for my previous example I was also adding that characteristic Dorian interval so F sharp to the top of the chord to get that kind of Dorian vibe out of the tonic chord. I get a B minor 7th chord on the 2nd scale degree, a C major 7th chord on the 3rd scale degree, a D dominant 7th chord on the 4th scale degree, 
an E minor 7th chord on the 5th scale degree, an F sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord on the 6th scale degree, or an F sharp half diminished chord if you will, and a G major 7th chord on the 7th scale degree. So the main thing that I want you to realize from all that is that one changed note in the scale has a big effect on the chords since it is used multiple times of course on the different scale degrees. So once again there's just one note that changes when we compare A minor to A Dorian. In A minor we have that minor 6th interval and in A Dorian we have a major 6th, so F for A minor, F sharp for A Dorian. But this seemingly small change has a big effect on the chords on each scale degree. So to further clarify that, let's take one of the absolute most popular cadences, 1, 6, 3, 7. And let's see how that sounds like with the chords in A minor compared to the chords in A Dorian. So to further outline this kind of drastic change, I was only using basic chords for the key of A minor and seventh chords for the key of A Dorian. But as you can hopefully hear, it sounds completely different. Of course, there's no right or wrong here or no better or worse solution. But as a songwriter, it's extremely important to have this kind of knowledge because you immediately know the right starting point for your composition. Depending on the kind of atmosphere, mood or emotions you want to convey with your composition, Dorian might be a much better choice than Aeolian or natural minor, for example. So this was just a short introduction into the world of modal chord voicings and progressions. Although we just talked about Dorian in this video, you can use this kind of knowledge for every other mode as well. As a homework exercise, it would be really great to compose a little song in A Dorian, also using the A Dorian scale to come up with a melody for all those interesting chords. This is a really fun and practical assignment and you will get a much better understanding of the Dorian mode than by just sitting down and studying scale diagrams and memorizing where to put your fingers with every scale box. So just visualizing the dots on the fretboard without really studying any theory information at all. I hope you have a lot of fun with the Dorian mode. I will see you again in the next video. All the best and have a lot of fun practicing until then.